This week, as the reading takes us to the reconciliation of Joseph and his brothers, the prophet's portion brings us to a future reconciliation foretold in Ezekiel 37. The dry bones have just been knit back together, and life has been breathed into them by the Most High. Many people see this as having been fulfilled by the ostensible resuscitation of the Jewish people after World War II, including the founding of the modern political state of Israel. When you see the many photographs of the people in the concentration camps, literally starved almost to death, and the many piles of dead bodies coming out of the gas chambers, contrasted with the lush green carpet of farms which covers the countryside in Israel today, it is easy to see how these pictures portray in real life the prophecy of the dry bones. In fact, the promise which follows in Ezekiel 37.21 reads, And say to them, Thus says the Lord Jehovah, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen, whither they be gone, and will gather them on every side and bring them into their own land. This appears to be fulfilled, as even as early as the 1880s, people began to come back to renew the biblical homeland. However, upon closer inspection, we see that the Ezekiel prophecy is addressed to two different people groups, for Judah and for the children of Israel, his companions, and for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. The division between these two groups has already taken place much earlier when Jacob, in fear of meeting Esau with his 400 men, split his entourage into two camps, as he said in Genesis 32:10, I am not worthy of the least of all the mercies and of all the truth which you have shown to your servant, for with my staff I passed over this Jordan, and now I am become two camps. But now, as the book of Genesis closes, before they endured their sojourn and trials in Egypt, And before they are released to come into the land promised to their forefathers, they are reunited to become one people again. However, when Jacob gives his last blessings to his son, we read that Joseph will again be separated. Genesis 49.22 Joseph is a fruitful bough, even a fruitful bough by a well, whose branches run over the wall. In verse 26, The blessings of the Father have prevailed above the blessings of my progenitors to the utmost bound of the everlasting hills. They shall be on the head of Joseph, on the crown of the head of him that was separate from his brethren. As far as the inheritance from Joseph to Ephraim, Jacob had blessed his grandson in the previous chapter. More about that in a minute. In short, the extended family goes into the land together, as related in the book of Joshua. The land is divided by lot, and they lived under the judges for several hundred years. The judges were followed by a time of a united monarchy under David and Solomon. Once the monarchy broke down, the nation remained divided into the northern kingdom, sometimes called after the most numerous tribe of Ephraim, and sometimes called Israel, and the southern kingdom called Judah. The terminology remains confusing because there are instances where both kingdoms together are referred to as Israel. For example, when we read about the future New Covenant in Jeremiah, it is specifically addressed to two people groups. Jeremiah 31.31 Behold, the days are coming, says Jehovah, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. But then in verse 33, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says Jehovah, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it on their hearts and will be their God and they shall be my people. In verse 31, both groups are mentioned separately, but in verse 33, they are mentioned collectively under the one name. It does not make sense to assume that verse 33 is meant to omit the house of Judah simply because it is not mentioned again. Therefore, it must mean both houses. Concerning the destiny of each kingdom, we find that the northern kingdom was carried off by the Assyrians between 732 and 721 BCE. They were dispersed into the nations, but never returned. 
Due to the fact that the religious practice, as established by Torah, had been badly polluted and essentially destroyed by the various northern kings for 200 years prior, the essential element which bound the peoples together was absent. There was no longer any attraction to draw them back to the land. The land covenant is part of the Torah covenant, and both were lost over the centuries of spiritual idolatry and adulteration. However, the southern kingdom, which contained the center of the cult, that is Jerusalem, continued to practice the injunctions of Torah, certainly not perfectly, but sufficiently for them to still be focused on the rituals. So when they were carried away into Babylon in 586 BCE, there remained a desire in the hearts of some to return. When given permission by Cyrus the Great to go and rebuild, some went under the leadership of Ezra and Nehemiah. It is said that the return was exactly 70 years after the expulsion, just as Jeremiah had foretold in verses 25.11 and 29.10. When we read in Ezekiel about the return of both nations, we can see that the return of the Jews, even from every corner of the globe, to the modern state of Israel does not fulfill the Ezekiel prophecy. Who and where are those of the house of Joseph and Ephraim? There are a few hints in the scriptures. Zechariah 10, 6-8 And I will strengthen the house of Judah, and I will save the house of Joseph. Notice again that both houses are mentioned separately. And I will bring them again to place them, for I have mercy upon them, and they shall be as though I had not cast them off, for I am Jehovah their God, and will hear them. And they of Ephraim shall be like a mighty man, and their heart shall rejoice through wine. Yea, their children shall see it and be glad, their heart shall rejoice in Jehovah. I will hiss or whistle for them and gather them, for I have redeemed them and they shall increase as they have increased. Again from Jeremiah 3, 11 through 14. And Jehovah said to me, The backsliding Israel has justified herself more than the treacherous Judah. Again, both houses are mentioned. Go and proclaim these words toward the north, and say, Return thou backsliding Israel, says Jehovah, and I will not cause mine anger to fall on you. I am merciful, says Jehovah, and I will not keep anger forever. Only acknowledge your iniquity that you have transgressed against Jehovah your God and has scattered your ways to the strangers under every green tree, and you have not obeyed my voice, says Jehovah. O oh, backsliding children, says Jehovah, for I am married to you, and I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion." To more fully understand this, we go back to Genesis 48, where Jacob adopts and blesses Joseph's two sons. Verse 16, The angel which redeemed me from all evil blessed the lads, and let my name be on them, and the name of my fathers, Abraham and Isaac, and let them grow into a multitude in the midst of the earth. Verse 19, And his father refused. That is, Jacob refuses Joseph's request for him to switch his hands and give the greater blessing to Manasseh, the older son. And his father refused and said, I know it, my son, I know it. He also shall become a people, and he also shall become great. But truly his younger brother shall be greater than he, and his seed shall become a multitude of nations. In verse 16, the verb for grow into a multitude is based on the Hebrew word for fish. Hebrew is a peculiar language where you can take a word, exchange the normal vowels for those following a different verb paradigm, and thus give a new meaning to the word root. This verse is the only place in the scriptures where this verb is used in this form. They will multiply like fish. In verse 19, the phrase translated as multitude of nations may also be translated from the Hebrew as the fullness of the Gentiles. This carries us to Romans 11.25, where Paul has written, For I would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles comes in. Romans chapters 9 through 11 is about the grafting in of the people of the nations into the olive tree. 
The sum of which remained at the time of Yeshua and of Paul was the Jewish nation. This is what the non-Jewish nations will be grafted into. In order for a graft of this sort to take, the plants must be of like kind. You can graft a peach, an apricot, and a nectarine together, but you cannot graft them onto a rose bush. This is not to say, however, that the nations are of biological descent from the tribes of the northern kingdom. No, not at all. Something else has happened that facilitates the grafting of the nations, and that is that they have had a blood transfusion from the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, Yeshua the Messiah. That is how they are grafted in. Think about the people of Yehovah across the globe. Until lately, we have seen them divide into two distinct groups, those who observe Torah and those who follow Yeshua. But in our time, we see the two sticks coming together as one in Yah's hand. It is the Father's work. What does Joseph say to his brothers? Is my father yet alive? The father uses Joseph, a type of Yeshua, to bring all his children together to prepare them for the trials in Egypt, the exodus out of Egypt, and the return to the land promised to their forefathers. Jeremiah sixteen fourteen through 16 Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says Yehovah, that it shall no more be said, Yehovah lives, that brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But Yehovah lives, that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north, and from all the lands whither he had driven them, and I will bring them again into their land that I gave to their fathers. Behold, I will send for many fishers, says Yehovah, and they shall fish them. And after will I send for many hunters, and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill, and out of the holes of the rocks. And a second witness in Jeremiah 23, 7-8. Therefore, behold, the days are coming, says Yehovah, that they shall no more say, Yehovah lives, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But Yehovah lives, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country and from all the countries whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Think about Revelation 14.12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Yeshua. Also John 4.23. But the hour is coming and now is, when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such to worship him. And Yeshua confirms in John 17.17. 17, Sanctify them through your truth. Your word is truth.